Thanks very much. I, I love that clout story. I have a colleague who shall remain nameless who likes to use the term manure for a, a certain football club. I think you know what I'm talking about. Guess, guess what his clout influence is. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yes, so thank you. Um, I'm Simon Hodson. I'm a program manager with JISC. Um, there's a number of areas in, in which JISC is working in, in big data, including learning analytics, uh, usage statistics, the digging into data program, um, web archiving even. Um, I hope you'll forgive me for sticking to my comfort zone and talking about um, the research data challenge. Um, I'm, the, I'm the manager of the research data program. So there'll be some reiteration of some key points from Graham's uh, presentation, but I hope that's all to the good. So, just considers it a priority to support universities improve, improving the way research data is managed and, where appropriate, made available for, for reuse. The where appropriate is important, of course. There's various drivers for this, including funder policies. Not a lot has been said today about the Research Council's policies, but they're very significant. And the recent, now a year old, EPSRC fund uh, research policy um, has, has caught the attention of a number of institutions as it requires a data policy, a roadmap for provision of a data uh, support service over the, over the next three years, and indeed a catalogue of research data holdings. Um, legislative uh, frameworks are important. We've heard about those, um, the information, uh, Freedom of Information Act, rather, and various ethical uh, frameworks are important. Um, and it's important, um, it is related to the open data agenda, and it's important for good scientific practice, as we've heard from a number of the, the speakers. So the, the fundamental principle is that the outputs of fun publicly funded research should be publicly available. Um, and this is good for, for research practice, not least because the evidence underpinning research findings should be available for, for validation. So if, uh, we've heard um, from the excellent uh, presentations from the, from the Sanger Institute and from Leicester how important good research data management is for making research data available for the extraction of knowledge. Not all research data is reanalyzed, but without good quality research data, uh, good quality research can't be conducted. And there's other benefits as well, the avoidance of data loss, which I'll say a little bit uh, a little about, and the more eff efficient research process itself. So this aligns very tightly with university missions. Few, a few universities would say that they didn't want to um, provide a, uh, an excellent research infrastructure. Um, and many universities, most universities now want to have a better oversight of, of the research outputs, and that includes the, uh, the research data which is produced by research projects. So uh, before this talk, I conducted a little straw poll with uh, some of the institutions uh, in, in which we have projects. This is estimates of res current research data holdings in, in two Russell Group universities and the 94 Group University. The, the mission groups don't really sort of um, you know, have much bearing on this, but it's just a way of, 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 of providing anonymity. Um, so, in, interestingly, the two Russell Group universities had fairly, fairly similar um, holdings of roughly two petabytes of both managed and unmanaged data, and that distinction um, is, is, is important, and we'll, we'll come on to that. One, one of those institutions currently provided eight, eight, uh, sorry, 800 terabytes um, of centrally managed storage, the other 300 ter terabytes. This is for, for research data. Not all of this is, is, is used. However, one um, institution gave me the estimate that, the, um, that their 800 terabyte store will be full in the next uh, 12 or so months. The point of, of this is that there is significant amount of data in temporary storage in external drives, etc. And an email I received this morning, actually, was, which was quickly incorporated into, the, into that slide. Um, the more groups we go to talk to, the more we're hearing of significant data holdings on external hard drives for RAID systems, etc., etc. I think it is fair to say that a lot of, in, a lot of universities really don't have a very, clear, a very accurate idea of the sheer quantity of research data which is, which is being held. It doesn't mean that all, all that research data needs to be uh, made available for reuse. It not, doesn't all, as we heard from the Science Institute this morning, doesn't all have a, a reuse value. But a lot of it will do, and it's important to know what you have, where it is, and what the potentialities are. Um, similarly, the 94 Group University doesn't provide any central data uh, storage provision. Um, 
that's uh, devolved to the faculties, but I think you can see from that slide there's all significant data, data storage issues there, um, notably um, in engineering more, more than the, the other faculties, uh, 170 terabyte faculty system with an urgent need for that to be expanded. And in recent interviews, they've uh, met one group which currently has 250 terabytes of video and, uh, data as it happens, um, only half of which is in managed storage, the rest is on external hard drives, etc. This is, this, is this is a commonplace um, and it's uh, potentially um, an issue because, of course, there's a, there's a risk with the sort of unmanaged um, storage, the, the data centre center under the desk, which comes with attendant risks of, of data loss. If anyone's seen this, is, this has appeared on a couple of blog posts. If anyone's seen this absolutely heartrending story of a PhD student losing an external hard drive with five years of research data on it, um, this is not the sort of thing that we want uh, key research departments um, to, to be doing. However, it's not just about storage or avoiding uh, data loss. It's about uh, good research management. And good research management, as we've heard, is about the triage and knowing precisely what to keep and what to throw away. And um, I don't think this can be stressed enough. Uh, Graham's made the case very, very strongly. It's from the researcher perspective as well, about making the most out of, the, out of data uh, created. Now, I think the Australian National Data Service that, that's doing a lot of work in this area has a nice take on, on what that requires, what it is that is required with the actions, the support, et cetera, that's required to make the data more, um, more reusable and to turn from disparate data objects, if you like, into, into structured collections and data that's from being unmanaged to being managed, disconnected to being connected, invisible to being findable. Findable is extremely imp important and from having a single use um, to, being, to, uh, to being reusable. And I think those, those principles, that mantra, if you like, is, is a very elegant way of, of, of stating a lot of the activities which uh, the Managing Research Data Program and which the Digital Curation Centre is in, involved with. So in the remaining time, I'm going to give you a, a very quick sort of three-part history of, um, of what we've been doing in the, in the Managing Research Data uh, Programme in related activities um, to tackle the research data problem. Um, prior to 2007 up to 2009, it was very much a, a matter of research, understanding the problem, and, and that was done through a series of reports, which I'll go into very briefly. Um, then with the first Managing Research Data Programme, very much the character of prototyping solutions, which since the second uh, program got started in 2011, there's been a process of hardening those solutions and above all an emphasis on building uh, capacity. And hopefully at the end I'll have a couple of minutes to say uh, where, what the next steps are. So important GIST-funded reports and, and, and other work in the area of, of understanding the problem. How, what is the challenge relating to research, uh, research data in, in uh, institutions? Um, three key reports there. There, are, there were others. And I'll just mention, as the, the role of um, data scientists and curators was mentioned earlier, an important report looking at the, those career structures um, and the recommendations of which we're trying to implement through training um, activities within the Managing Research Data Programme. But obviously, the, there's a broader um, activity within the whole sector required to, to build up those skills as has been stressed. The first Managing Research Data Programme got started in 2009 and was des designed on the basis of, of, of those reports, and in particular the, the, the fourth report that I, di I didn't mention, the UK RDS, uh, U UK Research Data Service Scoping Study, which um, did a lot of use, found a lot of useful information about, from, uh, about the, the state of data curation in, in, um, in universities. So we, we designed it along four strands, a set of projects looking at infrastructure in the broadest sense in, in institutions, both in terms of the human infrastructure, the support infrastructure, and the, and the systems themselves. Um, at this time, there was, a, uh, and, and still is um, to a large extent, a, a, an important focus on the creation of data management plans as a way of inculcating good practice. Um, so we explored what the challenges were with this, how to make them usable, how to meet particular disciplinary challenges. And we also um, had, had projects producing training materials, and projects looking at the challenges of data citation and data publication. And this is the important um, downstream uh, area, if you like, um, 
if the research data can't be cited, if it can't be reused, then there's little um, incentive for the, the researcher um, to, to make the research, uh, the research data available. The second program um, carried this, the, basically the same, the same, sorry, I'm just going to go back a slide. I should have mentioned that there's a lot of, out, we funded a lot of projects, they produced a lot of software, guidance material, training materials, etc. cetera. Um, the, the address for the outputs page there is, is well worth a look. There's um, a wealth of material there, which I'd like to draw your attention to. The second program, um, Followed basically the, the same structure, with, but as I've said, with a far greater emphasis on building institutional capacity. Um, so the 17 large projects um, developing research data management policies, developing the human infrastructure and, and uh, the, the technical systems. We continued the emphasis upon exploring what it is to, um, to uh, the role of data management planning in, in inculcating good practice, uh, what a good data management plan looks like, etc. And early next week, we'll announce um, a new set of projects to produce training materials and um, projects to, to develop innovative data publications. And I said that's the incentive side, the um, making the research, linking research data to uh, publications which extract knowledge and incorporating <coughs> the publication of research data into the scholarly life cycle, um, wherein we can, we can get uh, reward and recognition for researchers who do share their data. Um, so we like to think that in, in these programs we've, we've followed, a, you know, both in the program and the, the project, we've uh, followed a holistic ap approach which has joined these, the, these five areas. Um, the necess necessity within institutions for leadership and policy development, excuse me, um, the need for guidance and training for researchers and for research support staff, um, support for data management planning, as I stressed, the development of, um, of prototype uh, systems and infrastructure, which, is, uh, which has then been hardened by, by further projects, and as I've mentioned, the pu uh, publication, citation, and discovery mechanisms. Uh, some of this is being uh, reported on and synthesized by the Digital Curation Center, <coughs> um, who have in development um, a how-to guide, um, how to develop a, a research data management service in an institution, and that will um, serve as an introduction to a larger, a larger um, uh, toolkit, and that uh, strikes many of the same target areas um, that, I, that I've mentioned. So, uh, finally, next steps. Um, we've done a lot of work on building capacity in institutions, as I, as I stressed. Um, the next step, we, we feel, is to try and build some building blocks of a, of a national um, infrastructure and, and information systems. Um, so, in particular, as journals are increasingly implementing policies that are requiring the availability of research data, um, these are proliferating and it would be a good thing if researchers and research administrators and librarians had easy access and reference to those, to those, um, uh, to those policies and their, and their contents. And so we'll be um, funding from, from June a, uh, a scoping study, a feasibility study rather, for that sort of service. And I think it's also important um, now that universities are developing catalogues of their research data <coughs> assets um, to, to pull these together in a registry of research data to facilitate um, discovery and encourage reuse. Um, again, with a, with a mention of ANS as a good example of that in the, the Australian National Data Services Research Data Australia Discovery Portal. Um, and I think that's something which, which, any, which, which would benefit the, um, the, the higher education sector in this country as well. Links there for further information and I'll be keen to answer any questions uh, uh, later at the rates. Right. Okay, we have a little bit of time for questions. Any questions for any of our lightning speakers? You're feeling worn out. Ah, we have a question down the front there. So, uh, if I share my data um, and some random person picks it up and uses it, that's great. Uh, if they make some discovery that's um, complete junk, uh, you know, to, how do you avoid something like a Sakal hoax where someone picks up some, say, particle physics data 
aligns it with the phases of the moon and the tweet streams or whatever and ends up saying, oh yeah, Higgs bosons cause wars or whatever. Um, how, do you, how, how do you guys see uh, peer review of data usage, I suppose is the question. From the left. <laughs> oh, right. okay. Um, who's left? Uh, <laughs> peer review of data is um, an interesting question. Um, there are a number of data-focused journals increasingly that, that are exploring, you know, that already have some guidelines on, on peer review of data. I think it's, it's still um, a question that requires attention. I, mean, I think it's, I think the most important thing is to have the data available so it can be community reviewed. I'm talking more about the use of the data. So if, if I have a data set that's publicly available on whatever, uh, and you use it wrongly because you don't understand maybe the, the process that mm. I've gone through to create that data, or you've misread the metadata, or you've divided by zero or something right. like that. Right, you know? okay. Well, but wasn't it always thus? I mean, this, this is just, this is, you know, someone does some bad science, okay? You, you point this out. Yeah. You misuse the data. Your, your use I, of the data is, is wrong or flawed or I think could be better. I mean, I, I, I think this is just all, all incredibly tractable. Um, I think the problem is that the scale becomes discourse. much larger though, right? So if, if the, the, the volume of data is uh, exabytes, right, which is not far off, that's a huge amount of data that I can do all sorts of wacky, crazy stuff with. And tracking that provenance through those data sets becomes increasingly difficult mm -hmm. as well because you end up tracking more provenance data than data itself. So tracking provenance, again, that requires good quality data. Um, and again, I don't know. I, I'm not, I think I sort of refer to my previous, <laughs> previous answer. I, I think that, you know, so you can see in the, in the climate science world, the, you know, the discussion about, around models and, you know, it's incredibly complex. Science and it's it's uh, in some instances it's very hard to um, communicate publicly and very hard to defend from 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 attack both within the science and and outside it. Um, but I think that's just the world we're in, and I'm not sure that you know there's a there's a there's snappy answer there. And I've taken up too much time anyway. I think given the time, and given that felt like a good discussion to have during the, during the drinks reception. Um, I'm going to move us on and wrap up this little bit of the session and move on to our next speaker. So can we just say thank you to the three lightning speakers. <laughs>